thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. So, did you talk to anyone about videotaping? Is it does that really happen? Does this LAPD really videotape everything? From what I understand, whether or not they use a, a camera like Buzz uses, uh, a lot of the officers are using their cell phones. Uh, I think in order to protect themselves and also the suspects or, or other witnesses that might be there so that they can actually make documents of what's actually transpired. And if it comes into question, they can say, oh, but hey, here it is. If you really want to see what happened, I've got it on film. So I think they've made a habit of doing that now to cover everybody's behinds. So. What do you think, where do you want to see your character go? I would like to see Buzz's responsibilities expand beyond uh, the squad room, maybe take on some responsibilities outside in the field. Uh, he's been with the squad long enough, I think, and has observed quite a bit. Um, and I think the fears that, that his mother had earlier on about him being in a dangerous place, now that his sister's away at school, you know, she's, she's got her career, his father's long since passed, and I think Buzz has put that behind him, so I'm thinking he's looking for more career opportunities within, within the, the organization, but maybe to expand his duties. Do you think there will be a personal life for Buzz? That would be amazing to have to see Buzz's personal life. I'd love to meet his mother. Um, I know we've met his sister once before, and I'd love to see some sort of a uh, love interest, mm -hmm. which I think would be nice. You know, I think I said this a long time ago. I think I've done the very brave thing. This is a little tongue in cheek here of uh, being a gay actor playing a straight man on television. You know, um, although his sexuality's sort of been not addressed one way or the other. And I think it would be funny that if all the guys and the girls in the squad thought, well, we just naturally assumed that you were you were gay, and Buzz could say something like, well, yeah, like everybody makes that assumption, but look, here's my beautiful girlfriend who's smart and does everything. Um, before I fully realized who I was uh, at the age of 18 and 19, I had dated women, many women, um, but realized that there was something that was different for me, and then went ahead and made my decision to to be truthful to myself how did you come upon this role I mean, what happened this is going to be every actor's nightmare to hear this story because um i was studying history and art history in college which college uh, ucla oh okay uh, so, so i you... graduated in 2004 right before the show started um, i had done a couple of small little films one with uh, anthony alda and i'd done a couple of commercials a friend of mine encouraged me to take acting classes and commercial acting classes, so I did. Got an agent, booked a couple of commercials, and then a good friend of mine, Mike Robin uh, and Greer Shepard, they this project was already in the works, and they said, "Why don't we get Philip in to play this role in the electronics room?" Because they needed somebody who was cheap and would show up every day and be willing to learn. That was that was the basis for it in, in actuality. Um, and James, who is now my husband, said, no, 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 I don't want Philip to work on the show. It's not going to be, you know, good politics. It just wouldn't work out well. And DMAC and Greer cornered him and said, just let him do it. And I think the conversation went a little like, well, if he sucks, you know, we'll just we'll let him we'll let him go. But uh, everybody was really supportive and they kind of looked out for me and the, the role has grown. And I think at the end of year three, they made me a series regular. So by season four, Buzz was a series regular and saying much more than yes ma'am and no ma'am. Mm -hmm. But it was a little bit uh, like baptism by fire because I didn't know how to find my light. And I remember Tony saying, look, if you turn this way and you do this with your hand, you can you can feel the, the heat of the light on you. Um, I was thinking it was more like theater that you couldn't really go back. You just had to play along and, and stumble through where you could actually say, oh, wait a minute, cut, Let, let's, let's start again. So just a lot of, lot of little starts and stops. And I was very afraid to ask questions, which I was afraid to ask questions because I thought that would make me look stupid. And in reality, I was stupid for not asking the questions. So if I could impart any advice onto anybody for starting in this business, that would be it. Ask, ask, ask. Or any business. For that. This is true. It, it, this is true. A life lesson. That's true. Yeah. Questions yeah. are important. Do you did you have to learn any of the video kind of I've learned jargon? The, I've learned the basics, uh, point and shoot. Um, as far as actually operating the camera, I've learned how to do that, um, and just working with the camera crew on a regular basis, you learn some of the jargon. You know, uh, cut, print, uh, swinging singles. We're going to do a double. We're going to do you know that kind of thing. Turn around, changing lenses, just the the basics. Yeah. What do you want viewers to get out of your character? What I've really come to notice is that a lot of people like Buzz because he offers another way into the show. 
He's not a cop. He's not a detective. He's not a DA. He's he's a civilian working with the police. Um, so it's I think he offers a different point of view than everyone else because he doesn't have the the kind of training that they do. He doesn't have the the gruesome on hand experiences that a lot of the officers do. He, he's, his life isn't in danger most of the time every time he goes out, whereas these guys have that with them. Um, and his background is very different from everyone else who's come in here. Yes, he's had some personal tragedies early on, but uh, his perspective is very different than anyone else on the squad. Do you think your character resented the fact that Rusty was kind of thrown on you? And Was Rusty thrown on you because you were like the youngest of, of, of everyone in that? I think Rusty was thrown on Buzz because Buzz is a... In a sense, he's a bit of a gopher. I mean, go get the pizza, go get the coffee, go get this. Mm -hmm. and it's just natural that he would be the babysitter. Why not? He's only going to be, you know, setting up the video and doing these kinds of things. He doesn't have to run out to a call all the time. So in the beginning, I think Buzz was a little resentful of Rusty. Um, and Rusty was the little brother he never wanted, but has come to love and adore. And working with Graham, I, I love. I love when I have scenes with him because he's just such a professional and such a good actor. I, I always learn something from him. What would you like to get out of, um, how would you like your character to evolve over the years? Uh, like we discussed before, I would love to see Buzz with a personal life, uh, whatever that may be. Um, I would love to see more of his family. I'd love to go maybe to see where Buzz lives and see what his life is like outside of the squad, which we've seen pretty much everyone else's. You know, we've been to Julio's garage where he keeps his motorcycles. We've been to Lieutenant Provenza's house. We've been to Sharon's condo. Uh, Rusty was on the streets, now he's living with, uh, with Raider. Uh, we know that a lot of these other characters have families and sons and things like that, and I would like to see more of that for Buzz. Is there something in the future, <clears throat> or are you... I don't know. I, I, there's a couple of things that have been floated around in front of me um, that maybe were being discussed in the writer's room, but whether that happens or not, I don't know, so I can't really speak any more about it. Mm -hmm. I have hopes. Yes. So besides videotaping, mm -hmm. you also do the, during the interrogation, you, you yeah, handle that Yeah, we like to use the well. word um, interview, because interrogation oh. sounds like you're about to waterboard somebody. At least, at least that's what I think anyway. So we're interviewing these people in our conference rooms, in our, our uh, PR rooms. So it's a much more friendly environment. And uh, so he's making video and audio, audio recordings of the interviews. Um, and commenting on it at times as though he were an audience member. You know, again, it's a different perspective because the police already, they have, they have a lot of the clues beforehand and they deal with these guys on a regular basis. Buzz deals with them on the periphery. And so I think his comments are more akin to those of the audience. You know, like, oh my God, I can't believe these people are re reacting this way. Their garage is full of blood. What are they concerned about this thing for? They should really be concerned about the victim and what's happened and not be so self-centered. Mm -hmm. so, that kind of thing. Is there anything you'd like to add that I have not asked? Mm, I don't think so. You asked some really good questions, which we don't always get, so I thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you giving Crime Spree the interview. You're welcome. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. You too. Nice meeting you again. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.